All right, guys, so the Twitter hackers involved in the Bitcoin uh, scam that happened on July 15 have been caught. They were a bunch of punk ass teenagers, 19, 22 and well, 19 and 17 and, and 22, I think. They've been caught because they're dumb. Yeah, they did carry a, a massive, one of the biggest, if not the biggest hack. I hate the word hack. This is, this is, was just a, it was a social engineering, very well crafted social engineer. We're going to talk about it a little bit. We learned more since I made the video on July 15th or July 16th. We learned so much more. And uh, let's discuss uh, how they get caught. How did they get caught? Uh, and uh, what happened exactly that uh, actually allowed that attack to happen in Twitter? And I have some of the thoughts that could help, maybe, in, in prevention of this in the future. How about we discuss, guys? So I'm not going to mention those punk names uh, because they just don't deserve the uh, the fame or, or, or whatever this thing is. Because some of people do this just to get recognized and known, right? And uh, this is, to me, this is just a crime. And... Uh, Showing their names is is just encouraging a lot of other copycats, which which we don't want, <laughs> obviously. Uh, yeah, so they've been caught. Why? Because once the hundred k money had been delivered to this, first of all, let's let's summarize what happened in July fifteen, guys. So in July fifteen, all of a sudden, we open our Twitter and we say. We see Elon Musk tweeting, hey, you want to make more money? Just donate $1,000 to this Bitcoin account. And we're, I'm going to send you $2,000 to the same account. And, and Joe Biden and Obama and everyone is just starting with the same Bitcoin address. Hmm. Unless they're doing some sort of a shared, uh, <laughs> shared pool kind of thing. That was not the case. They were... It has been hacked. Twitter has been hacked and have been used to tweet uh, uh, on on the, some of the famous Twitter accounts and to basically just use it for this Bitcoin um, scam, let's say, right? And we talked about how this happened. I, I, I had a, a wrong idea when I first made the video that I thought you can tweet on behalf of of someone using an internal tool because that's what happened they gain access to an internal tool and we're gonna discuss how that happened right but they get managed to gain access to an internal tool using an actual twitter employee credential so so here's what happened and, and this is the latest latest and greatest news from twitter so what happened here is the the attacker, the attacker, the hacker, those kids, managed to do a spear, a phone spear phishing attack, which basically means calling the employees and pretending to be other employees and gain access to their internal credentials. So they were able to get into the internal network and gain access to a Twitter employee credentials so that's the first big thing however those initial employees that were given access to they get access to they did not have access to those account management tools that they used to basically reset the password altogether and log in on behalf of the uh, victim twitter accounts they use that, and this is what I didn't understand from Twitter. They use the actual uh, access that they have for those employees to gain access to other employees' accounts. It was like, what? How? I work at a company, and, and there is no way I can get a credential from someone else unless they carried another 
phone spear phone phishing attack on their employees and they can easily prove that hey hey it's jack and uh, i don't know i forgot my credentials can you let me in or can you give me access to this account management tool because of this maybe they just said maybe they just played some some social engineering internally so so it's a layered attack so i gotta give them props those kids <laughs> right i'm not gonna mention their names to be honest i'm not good they don't deserve it those punk ass kids but yeah they 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 went through three level of defenses right to, just to get to an employee with access to account management and there are claims that they said it was post noted on 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 a, on a slack channel i'll be surprised if that's true i'll be really surprised if someone actually pin their credentials hey it's my book look back is doing their job <laughs> okay so yeah yeah i don't think the slack thing is a true thing to be honest I'll, that would be really embarrassing but anyway they gain access to this and that's what happened and once they get access to the account management tool they were able to not tweet on behalf of that that's what i said but because that's the screenshot i got i was i got tricked by those by, by some uh, some news so no, it was just a tool that allows you to reset the password without notifying the original user. Or maybe it notifies, but doesn't need for a verification to click on a button to say, okay, I trust you that you want to re reset your password. It's just a hard reset on the password. And you can just, once you re hard reset, you can just put any password you want. And then that will give you access to the... Uh, to the account itself because you know the password you just use any twitter client to connect to the account twitter account and then just tweet on behalf of them access the dms and do all that stuff so and then twitter claims that no no verified account where uh the dms of any verified account were not uh accessed that that's the what they claim because everything is logged right anything you we do that's just prove anything we do on twitter is logged which is kind of a good thing in this case right because we, we want to know that hey hussein clicked on his dms on uh, july 13th and uh, he viewed the dms and he blocked certain people and he deleted certain stuff the, the, all this uh, uh, logging is very very important footprint uh, is very important so yeah so how did they get caught <laughs> so all the money that have been transferred from this bitcoin address has been started to disperse into other bitcoin addresses and, and if the fbi was on top of it they know the bitcoin address is, is right there right and they start following because all the public ledger in, in bitcoin is public and eventually bitcoin is useless as it is without converting into actual money right who wants bitcoin right you can unless someone is like want to really do oh i don't trust the banks kind of a game which i really doubted right they want to just buy bitcoin so they can convert it to actual money so they can spend it nobody wants bitcoin for the sake of bitcoin right they want just it's a it's, a, it's something that's a, as a leverage right so yeah eventually this bitcoin was transferred to other account bitcoin accounts which those kids they verified their bitcoin addresses with a service called binance i believe was it called binance i think it's called binance some services like that yeah it's, was it called binance yes it's called binance and coinbase so those guys use their own driver license to verify themselves with these services so they can basically exchange the bitcoin into actual dollars and, and spend it right because they want that and once they verified the fbi tracked where the money was being dispersed they landed on these uh, terminal addresses and they found oh this address look at coinbase and binance 
obviously obviously they apparently worked with Binance and Coinbase FBI and you better give us this information so they gave us they gave them the Bitcoin address linked with the actual information and they found the puppies they found because eventually you're gonna get caught or unless you're gonna leave the Bitcoin money forever then you're not gonna get caught but the moment you try to spend it yep you're gonna get caught so <laughs> that's so that's how uh, that's how what happened here exactly. So all of them, I think, got caught. The mastermind was uh, the nickname is Clark. He's not really his n real name, but that's the his nickname in Discord or whatever. But yeah, they've been caught. This this attack, man, drove the internet into a frenzy. So how do Twitter will prevent this in the future, right? Because it's a, it's a system management tool, guys. I, uh, I, I, I listen to one professor says, yeah, this reset password tool, even if you have access to this, we want to have some sort of a double uh, uh, verification. So yeah, if you want to reset a password of certain Twitter account, you need two or three employees to verify in order to actually do the reset, right? So this tool will not work with some one person. It needs multiple persons. So I'm just make it harder and harder. But nobody thought that someone will gain access to this tool from the outside, which happened, right? Uh, what's Morphe's law? If something is, uh, uh, is about to happen, will happen? Is that is that Morphe's law? Let's listen. Morphe, Morphe's law. Was that Morphe's law? Murphy's Law, a supposed law of nature expressed in, in various humorous popular saying in the effect of anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, guys. Anything that can go wrong. And so let's, let's just plan for the worst, right? And hope for the best kind of a scenario. So yeah, that's what happened. That is what happened, right? So, so one way. Another way is believe it or not i just heard about this thing i read this news and uh, there's this f new encryption it's called homomorphic encryption let's read through this a little bit so this homomorphic encryption ibm just was able to actually do this so what the heck is homomorphic encryption so we don't know if our data in Twitter is encrypted in the database, right? Because it's probably not. Because how do they do their trends and, and all that stuff, right? How do they train? Do they look at the content that you're tweeting? It's just a bunch of rows in a table somewhere. Or keys and values. So, that's not encrypted. And, and we don't know any service that actually encrypts their data in the database because it's just if you encrypt it then they they need to decrypt it somehow right so yeah we don't know if our data is actually encrypted in, in the database and they cannot encrypt it because they want to run analytics and they want to do some operations on the data so they can uh do trends, do stuff like that uh yeah it's all i said they need the system admin need access to the actual plain text data so they can do this stuff which is unfortunate but that's the solution that's the situation today homomorphic encryption can change that homomorphic encryption ibm i believe i hope it's ibm ibm yes ibm was the first i think to perform this and what it means is that once the data is encrypted you cannot perform any operations on it because you're gonna corrupt it right you cannot like encrypt the number seven and then add three to it because you have to decrypt it, add three and re-encrypt it again, right? And the act of decrypting will reveal the data. So homomorphic encryption is the ability of applying operations on the encrypted data itself, which is awesome, right? They were able to kind of do the basic arithmetic on encrypted data. I think addition and multiplication, something like that, which is the basis of every single thing in computer science, to be honest, right? Uh, 
I look at the day where a database will be will will, will there will we will have a support for database a homomorphic uh, database engine. Wow, I think this will come maybe in seven years or eight years from now. And imagine once you have a homomorphic database, my God, that will be a, a, a really it's a big leap in encryption standard and security and in privacy you guys will have your privacy nobody can see what you're doing but they can actually perform analytics they can do stuff with your encrypted data to a certain extent but they cannot see it even if someone logged in they cannot see what you tweeted right even if someone went to the database and wrote tried to write in a row insert into tweet stable where whatever right it's insert an actual tweet in the database they cannot do that because of homomorphic encryption today obviously those punk kids can't do it because they are punk kids they don't know this stuff they, they basically know very they are script kitties that's where they are right what they they don't know deep analytics computer science they 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 not yeah, they don't know how this stuff works. But let's say they did and they didn't have access to the uh, accounts or access accounts or whatever, this account management tool. They were able, they can be able to go to the database and insert a row in the appropriate table that correspond to Donald Trump. Or it even better, just go and update the row that says whatever as a single tweet id go to that tweet and make it say something else <laughs> who, who can stop them if you have access to the actual system that stores the database anyone can do that right if you know where ta what tables to update homomorphic encryption i believe can prevent this i don't know guys i think this is the future it's pretty coolish stuff what do you guys think about the whole mess with Twitter and the th something like that, but I, I have I have my empathy because it's it's a big system, it's a big company, and, and it happens. Someone has to fa fall through this stuff, so we all can learn internally in our companies and our system that we build to build better systems. All right, guys, that's it for me today. <laughs> that's a very long video for news, but I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.